I'll tell you what, when I was a kid at school, having fun without a care in the world, having kickabouts in the playground, playing cricket, learning algebra and maths, doing science experiments, no one ever told me how challenging adult life is when you don't have a teacher telling you what to do, trying to figure things out for yourself with minimal guidance. Fortunately for me, and I know this isn't the case for most other people, I started diving when I was nine years old. Although it didn't teach me how to navigate adult life, it did teach me a number of really good strategies which will help me get a good chance of finding success, finding happiness. One of those strategies is called goal setting. What is goal setting and why has it been so important to me? In 2004, at the age of nine years old, after watching it on TV, I dreamt of becoming an Olympian. In 2012, at the age of 17, I set myself a goal of qualifying for the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. At both times, I was imagining where I saw my future self achieving some big things. But the difference is that my 2004 dream was vague and unclear, whereas my 2012 goal was specific, it gave me direction, and it gave me a clear pathway to the target. Again, I'm aware that for the majority, qualifying for the Olympic Games is not a realistic goal. And that's fine, because we all have our big life challenges, and we all have to face trying something for the first time, whether that is getting your first job, diving into your first relationship, saving to buy your first home, or even planning to go traveling for the first time. It becomes a bigger challenge to approach these things blind with no plan or direction. I believe that you're more likely to find success if you use some form of goal setting, even for something as basic as a New Year's resolution, like saying in 2022, I wanna exercise every single day. That's one thing, but if you say that with a clear goal and a clear plan, it gives you a clear pathway to the target and it means that you're more likely to stay on track. Before we go into the theory of it, why should you listen to me? Why should you listen to what I'm saying? I mean, after all, I'm just a 26 year old guy. I don't have that much life experience. I've never had a proper job. I mean, I'm a diving coach, but it's not nine to five. I'm not in a relationship. I don't own a house and I've never been traveling. I mean, I've been traveling, but not like gap year traveling. All I do is jump off a board into water. Ah! I don't have like a qualification in goal setting but what I've done is I've been able to match the theory of goal setting to the experiences that I've had in sport understanding the way that I've managed to forge a successful career with all the odds against me I mean look at me I don't look like a normal diver I suit swimming better to be completely honest the journey hasn't been straightforward physically mentally financially but I've always found a way to stay positive and stay on track what's always helped me to do that is by having a clear long-term goal and also having a number of mini short-term goals that I can tick off along the way now to the theory smart goals are what I work by pause the video now and think about what the acronym smart stands for to you and see if it matches my interpretation what did you get well here are my definitions s is for specific you have to make sure the goal, whether it's short or long term, is as specific as possible. For example, I want to save X amount of pounds by this particular date. For me, my goal was to score 400 points at the 2016 World Cup. That's what my coach thought would be enough to get me into the top 18 and secure my spot for the Olympic Games. I ended up scoring 397.9 and finished in 17th place. So I was pretty close to the target and also my coach was right with the score. M is for measurable. In order to stay on track towards your long-term goal, you need to have a way of measuring your progress as you continue moving forwards. For example, if you want a job in the next six weeks, you're sending out applications, you can use the number of applications you send per week as your measure. For me, since we decided in 2012 that 400 points was my target for 2016, which works out to be about 66 points per dive, me and my coach would sit down after each season and assess how my dives had gone, which ones are consistently hitting over 66 points, which ones had potential to hit 66 points but weren't doing so consistently and which ones were absolutely nowhere near. And this helped us decide which dives I would use at the 2016 World Cup because that was a really important decision to make. A is for achievable. But I also think that ambitious can fit in here quite well. This one depends what you want. I would always say be ambitious but being ambitious can also be achievable. Basically, don't set unrealistic targets, but at the same time, don't be afraid to dream big. I like the saying, shoot for the moon, then if you miss, you'll end up amongst the stars. For example, when you figure out what house you want to buy, how much it costs and how much you need to save per week or per month, try and save double. For me, as someone who had literally never competed at the international level before 2012, and then later on in 2012, I went to Junior Worlds, junior worlds and finished 28th setting the target over the 2016 olympic games and getting to an olympic level in four years was very very ambitious but it was certainly achievable because the only thing that stood in my way was me and the hard work that i needed to do r is for relevant 
make sure your goals align with your personal values and make sure that your short-term goals are on the path towards your long-term goal. For example, if your long-term goal is to go traveling in three years time, but in the meantime, you have to work hard in order to earn enough money to pay for the traveling and also to earn the freedom to be able to go traveling, then you need to make sure that your money goals are all aligned towards that long-term goal. I mean, don't set a goal in that situation of spending more time with your friends or doing more social activities because that doesn't map towards your long-term goal. For me, I set myself a mini goal in 2015 to go seven months until after the World Cup in 2016 without drinking. That was to help give me the best chance of getting the most out of my training and being able to compete as well as possible when it came around to that World Cup. And finally, T is for time-based. I think it's good to, I'd say, put a soft deadline on your goals. Having a clear start and a clear aim to finish will help you break your goal down into little segments which can also be time-based. It'll also give you that motivation to get yourself into a position where you're attacking your goal. For me, I didn't have the flexibility to set a soft deadline. The World Cup was when it was gonna be, so that deadline was very, very clear, but it definitely gave me the motivation to work hard and achieve that goal. But then at the end of the day, especially if you're in control of that situation, if you don't hit your goal, by the deadline, it's not the end of the world. It's not a big deal. You'll probably be closer to that goal than you were at the start. So to recap, be specific, make sure your goals are measurable so you can track your progress. Make sure they're ambitious. Don't be afraid to dream big, but don't make them unrealistic. They've got to be achievable. Make sure they're relevant to you as a person, to your values, not to someone else's, not to what someone else wants. And make sure they follow some kind of time frame or time scale so that you can be motivated to achieve your goal by a specific time. Now, I can't guarantee you'll find success if you follow the SMART framework but I believe you'll get out as much as you put in. One of my favorite quotes at the moment is, you reap what you sow. So set your goals and let's smash them out of the park. Thanks for listening. See you later. Peace.